It's a Bumblecast Mini, sponsored by Madeline Blue Star 7. Let's jump right on into it. Starting with, would the email for IDW Sonic Fan Mail and IDW Social Media also be a place to ask for characters who were in Archie Sonic to be in IDW Sonic, such as Mina Mongoose and Honey the Cat? Yes. Send your requests politely over that way. Alrighty. I was wondering if it is possible for any items that sell out on the Bumble King comic shop to come back in stock. Also, I was wondering if there's a chance for Japanese versions of IDW Sonic books to come to the shop. Technically, yes, but prices would have to go up to make it feasible. And I really like the fact that I'm able to sell at cover price, if not a little cheaper, because the shipping and handling is already kind of high because shipping out of Canada is a nightmare. So if there is demand for it, I can look into it. But right now, the shop itself moves fairly slowly. So I'm not looking into it. For the Japanese stuff, I I don't think I can get my hands on that too easily, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't think IDW actually handles the distribution of that at all. No, 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 no. completely the, separate. Yeah, all foreign language editions are handled completely separately. I don't know really how I got my hands on the Spanish editions, but there you go. <laughs> Next question. I wanted to ask for your advice pertaining to work in writing. I'm currently in college and aspiring to enter the entertainment arts industry as an animator, illustrator, and writer, and I'm planning on looking for work from my home state. Goals I have are to work on IPs with available positions, such as Sonic, and also to pitch my own IP as an animated TV series and possibly also make it into a light novel. Also, I'm interested in possibly commissioning you in the future for editorial reviews of my original work. What steps would you recommend for breaking into the industry in both remote and in-person work? I unfortunately don't feel like I have a lot of great insight into it because I got into the industry in the way that you're never supposed to. I got super freaking lucky and I don't feel comfortable telling folks, eh, roll the dice. Maybe fortune will smile in your favor. I feel like the best way to present yourself these days is to create your online portfolio, to create your original work, to display it online, which you can do for very cheap these days. And you don't even have to be that knowledgeable in web design. A lot of stuff has got a lot of WYSIWYG formats these days. So you can put yourself out there much more easily, but that also means you're competing with everyone in the public space a lot more too. Uh, it's to get breaking into comics, at least I would say, you know, try to connect with creators that you enjoy and try to connect with editors on projects that you want to get involved with. And it's a catch 22 because you usually can't get in touch with these people until you're in the industry and you can't get into the industry until you're in contact with these people. The best you can do is, you know, show off your material and very patiently and politely present yourself to these folks and hope that they respond in turn. Let your talent speak for yourself. And you've got to find that fine line between being too aggressive and thus becoming off-putting and being too passive, in which case they're like, oh, that was a nice thing. And then you never get to follow up with them. I do not have a good answer on how to approach that. And looking at things now, I am terrified at the prospect of having to start from scratch if I had to. Like, I, oh, I'm very thankful for where I am right now. Breaking into TV and animation, I have got nothing for you. Um, my brief stint in television was purely through my connections because of the comics. Uh, and there's really, once you get your foot in the door in one place, it's all about networking internally and expanding from there, which I'm really very bad at. Um, and the way that animation is going now, at least in North America, I, I wouldn't know what to advise you then. And I certainly don't now, cause it looks like it is just desperate 
in the animation industry right now. And it's frightening. And I really worry for a lot of my friends in the industry. I wish them all the best and hopefully things will shake out from it. Kind of want somebody with money to just start an animation service, you know, a Western equivalent of Crunchyroll or something like that. Mm -hmm. And bring all this stuff on board and just make money. Yeah. But what do I know? Not much as this, not much as this answer has shown thus far. <laughs> as for me editing stuff, I do have rates for review and narrative direction and just depending on how much you want my hands in the guts of your project. So you can always email me, see if my schedule's free. We'll discuss rates. I'll quote what it would be and we'll, we'll do lunch. We'll talk business. We'll do the thing. All righty. And next up. I have a question pertaining to issues 50 and 51, Tails meets Kit. I feel that Tails sees a lot of himself in Kit when he tells Kit he knows about being different, and tells Sonic that Kit is traumatized. Since he was bullied in the past, Tails empathizes with the trauma that Kit went through and knows that he would have gone through the same thing if Starline captured him. This is personally my headcanon of Tails' thoughts, and I was wondering, is this something you were intentionally conveying to the reader? It's so heartwarming. To a degree, neither Sonic nor Tails know exactly what Starline did to Kit and Surge, but they do know that bad things happened. Um, so th I, I don't know if Tails goes so far as to think, you know, this is what would have happened to me if Starline had gotten a hold of me. I think it's more generally this kid didn't have support. He's clearly got some baggage. I can connect with him on that level and try to de-escalate the situation. So, yeah, we're we're mostly on the same wavelength here. Alrighty. Next up, when I see claims that the moment in Sonic Forces when Tails is scared of chaos is out of character for Tails and criticism of it, I feel that it overlooks the reason that he was scared. He thought that his brother was dead and he was traumatized and suffering, which led to what happened in Forces. And Ian, I loved how you showed these emotions when Tails talked to Sonic in issue one of IDW and expressed concern for him. Personally, I feel that is entirely in character for Tails to go through something traumatizing and be shaken up, and that the key to writing this part of the character is to balance it with his determination and bravery. How do you guys view this aspect of Tails' character and the scene of him and Chaos in Forces? I get where you're coming from, but I, I agree with the general consensus that it wasn't an earned moment of fear. Like, if we go back to Sonic Adventure, he didn't know what happened to Sonic with the destruction of the egg carrier. Like, as far as he knew, Sonic was dead, and yet he still persevered. He still fought for Station Square, and when confronted with Eggman, and God, I love the line reads in that. He sounds absolutely terrifying. Tails steps up because Sonic isn't there, and the people need him. He has to be the hero. In Forces, the world has gone to hell in a handbasket, and he's attacked by Chaos Zero, someone that he's already encountered and fought as Chaos Four. Now, granted, within the context of Sonic Adventure's story, you can presume that he fought Chaos Four alongside Sonic and Knuckles, but he has experienced this before. He has fought bigger and more dangerous things in equally bleak circumstances. So the fact that he just folds is what irks people. You know, Sonic Adventure 2, Sonic is in jail, so he storms the military compound on his own. No backup. He goes in guns blazing. And then we get to Unleashed, and he's running and hiding from monsters. And we get to Forces, and the world needs him just as much as Station Square did. And he folds. He just curls up. And that, I think, is the issue. And so with IDW going forward, what I tried to find was that balance of the loss in forces did shake him, but he realized that he needed to step up. He needed to do, he needed to be the hero he had been in the past. Yeah, I think, I, 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 I definitely see where Madeline is coming from. And honestly, I tend to kind of agree with her a little bit more, but... I do also understand where the criticism came from, for sure. It, it's it's not a great moment, but and there's ways you can justify it. It's just after the fact. They didn't really justify it in the 
original material, obviously. No. So it's more course, something you kind of have to work massage after the fact. So of course that scene has more problems like classic Sonic one shot in Chaos Zero and <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean it forces has problems, especially narratively. Argue that it was a weak phantom copy, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. In episode 18 of Sonic X, Tails mentions to Chris that someday he wants to start an engineering company in Station Square when he gets older. Since Sonic and friends had to go back to their planet, this didn't happen. I know that Sonic X has a varying canon to the games that it shares, a sun, that it shares some storylines with, though I was wondering, has Tails aspiring to start a company been something that Sega has ever given notes about as a trait of his character? Like how he loves Mint? No, that's never come up. And I don't know if I particularly like that. Number one, it doesn't seem like the animals on Sonic's Earth are very industrial minded in general. And for a character who's spent his entire young life fighting industrialization of the most evil kind, having him start up a company doesn't particularly jive with me. Maybe if it's within the context of helping others and, you know, expanding his creations to help people more efficiently but corporate tales hey i don't know i have a i have a hard time wrapping my head around that one and next up i know that you try to not look at fan content though i was wondering if sonic and tales r is one fan project that you can watch also can you view fan stories that are alternate versions of events that have already happened since the events that they take place in are already in the past Noop, 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 because number one, I haven't seen Sonic and Tails are. I don't know what that is. It is um, a radio is a fan made radio drama, but it actually has um, Mike Pollock is the voice of Eggman in it. And uh, Ryan Drummond is the voice of uh, Sonic. But it's how in the totally, world did they get away with that? But it's totally fan made. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure. He did. A, they did a song with uh, Tony Harnell also. So. I don't know how they did it. How I'd, is that not breach of contract? I don't know like, how they did it with. I don't know how Emmy Jones pulled it pulled it off, but it's there. Like, oh, and don't get me wrong. I think yeah. Apparently, Shadow's four kids voice is Shadow, and I think also Knuckles' uh, Sonic Adventure one voice is the voice for Knuckles in there. Holy crap! That's super cool. It is. It's very good. It's very like, extremely well done. I don't I know how no they pulled idea. it off, but yeah, they but, did. Like, good on you, and if you haven't listened to it, I say go listen to that. I can't, but you go enjoy it, because that sounds like a trip. It's very cool, yeah. Um, as for fan content uh, based on alternate takes, no, because there's always the chance that there's like a flashback moment that maybe takes ideas from that scenario, or, you know, multiverse is a thing in sonic it might get explored further and if somewhere down the line it's like oh let's do an alternate metal virus mini or something ah, i don't want to risk it so i have to be super super vigilant which is to say not vigil at all all right next up would it be possible at all for human and human styled sonic characters who haven't had many appearances such as shara Merlina, Elise, Law, Professor Pickle, the President, and Sage after Frontiers to appear again in modern Sonic media such as IDW or animations? I mean, they should. It's part of the brand. But there's also kind of pushback from various angles on the humans showing up, which I also get because I kind of wish humans were never a thing in Sonic. Like, I wish Sonic Adventure hadn't opened that door and Eggman was just the weird one-off, but it's here. It's established. There's lots of games that have said, this is the world and this is the population. So there's the toys play with them. That's my mentality anyway. Yeah. But I don't know. That's all entirely up to the various overseers of the brand. Alrighty. Yeah. I, I, maybe we'll see that. Maybe we'll see the, the, the pink purple haired girl show up somewhere maybe maybe speaking of Elise, how would you guys write her to be more involved in the combat of 06 besides the shield in the game my opinion on this character is mixed i love her friendship with sonic and her strength with the task of not crying 
I wish that she wasn't a damsel in distress and that an aspiration to be an adventuring warrior was something that was added to her character, since she did express through her dialogue that she w desired adventure. Maybe she could have been shown having a workout room in the castle and training there. I also wish that Sonic didn't have to carry her through the whole game. She needed to change into some athletic shoes when she got back to the castle so she wouldn't have to run in heels the whole time. <laughs> I... I don't know if she necessarily needs to be yet another action heroine for her story to work. Because Elisa's whole thing is that she is very restrained. She's very restricted. She can't be, she can't open herself up for fear of unleashing Iblis, whether she knows that or not. I feel like that aspect of her should have been more thoroughly explored because having her being, you know, all happy and smiling and emotive kind of undercuts the ability the, the whole point of her having to be restrained like if in the opening cutscene where you know she's waving to the people of soliana for the festivities if you get this moment of seeing her you know being reserved and that she has to put on the mask of being happy and open for the sake of the ceremony that would be one thing and that sonic teaching her that denying yourself is not a healthy form of control that moderation is and letting her grow in that regard, I think would have been better serving for the character uh, to that end. You know, she is very restrained, so she hasn't done much and adventuring doesn't necessarily have to mean combat, you know, go outside of the castle, explore her kingdom, explore her world, you know, do stuff, go open yourself up to the world that you're hiding from. I feel like is more of the message that should have been there. So less of her being an active combatant and more of a companion to Sonic. Like I thought the gimmick of her raising the shield would be a neat first step. You know, she's very protective of herself and so now that's expanded that sphere of influence to protecting her and Sonic. And then maybe expand that power from there to, I don't know, be part of a puzzle sequence. She is able to step away from Sonic and more actively affect the level around you. This would require like an entire redo of the game design itself, not just the writing. But... I don't know if I would really want her to, you know, pick up a flaming claymore as cool as that would be. I mean, flaming claymores are cool. <laughs> Let, let's not argue at that point. Yes. But I don't think she necessarily, I don't think you have to swing the pendulum all the other way and make her punch somebody to give her more agency necessarily. Right. I think she could be an interesting character, but I mean, there were a lot of things in 06 that had potential and were very, could be very interesting, but as I've said before, 06 was not finished, which includes the story. The story wasn't finished either, so. Uh, what could have been? Would it be possible at all for characters from the Sonic OVA, such as Sarah, her father, the president, and the Owl Man to appear in the classic Sonic universe? It would be awesome for these characters to be canon to it. I hadn't considered that, but that does make sense. I want the, old, I want the Owl Guy back. Bring him back. Yeah. I want him to be wearing Sonic's favorite shirt, even though Sonic doesn't wear shirts. <laughs> I'm wearing Sonic's favorite clothes that he never wears. Uh huh. They're his favorite um, clothes. It doesn't mean he needs to wear them. That he just has them, and they're his favorite. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, they're maybe, just... maybe he just has them on display on a wall or something in his, yeah, in his yeah, yeah. It crashed airplane. I, 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 I think it. <laughs> Man, those look really uh... cool. Those are, that's sharp. <laughs> <laughs> it's rad man <laughs> I think OVA is counted as its own spinoff and thus is off limits yeah. but it is very definitely grounded in the classic aesthetic so maybe I mean it looks like Sonic pursuing. CD <laughs> yeah yeah I mean classic Sonic isn't super narrative driven and the idea of a president of a country or planet, however you have to revise it, you know, Sarah herself, old man, owl, it, that starts to get more and more into narrative territory. And classic is a lot simpler and more straightforward. So I don't know if that would fit with what classic is doing right now, but classic is also 
really just getting going as its own thing. So I don't know. Yeah. I, it's worth bringing up, I guess. Hmm. All right, we can try it and see what happens. There might be a rights thing, too. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know if those characters are owned by the animation studio or if there's some kind of usage restrictions. So that might be a factor, too. I don't know. Yeah. All righty. And our next question. Six years ago, Sega included My Little Pony in a survey of theirs where they asked fans which franchises they would like to see cross over with Sonic. So it seems that Sega has been interested in both franchises crossing over before. The IDW comics of G4 of My Little Pony have now ended, and IDW has a series for G5, which takes place in the future of the same universe. Do you think that it would be possible at all for a crossover of Sonic and G4 and or 5 of MLP by IDW to happen, since IDW still has the license of the MLP franchise? And I was wondering if you could put in a word to IDW that a crossover of Sonic and G4 and or G5 of MLP is desired. A lot of three-letter acronyms in that <laughs> question. <laughs> um, I think it could work, given my surface-level understanding of G4 pony lore. I haven't touched five, so I don't know. Uh, it would really come down to Hasbro and Hasbro owns My Little Pony, right? I believe they do, yeah. Okay, so Hasbro and Sega, it would ultimately be up to them. But I would imagine IDW could get that rolling. I don't know. I, going back to your very first question, submit it to you know the social media and the fan stuff. Say, we want to see this. And if there's enough demand, maybe it'll prompt it. All righty. Here's a big one. How would you guys rewrite Sonic Lost World? <sighs> So does this assume that all of the elements in play have to remain the same? Like, do the Deadly Six still have to be part of it? Does <laughs> the, does Lost I Hex have so. to be part of it? Like, I, I'm just wondering, like, can we just write it? Can we just turn it into a crossover with Jurassic Park instead? <laughs> <laughs> I think we have to use what's there. Okay. Otherwise, it's not right. It's just something new. <laughs> well they called it lost world i mean what do you expect <laughs> zavok size uh, a tyrannosaurus size zavok which i guess technically we got we got <laughs> all right well <laughs> i don't know jeff goldblum voicing eggman though that would have been fun <laughs> i, I kind of wonder and like maybe there's an alternate universe where they cast him as Robotnik in the movies. <laughs> Which, honestly, could have also worked about as well as Jim Carrey does. It mm, would be a different mm. It would be a different Eggman, but it also kind of wouldn't be. Like, he might be a little less, uh, like, oh, geez, a little less off the wall, but he'd still kind of have a weird speech pattern and everything, so... Quirky, yes. He'd be very quirky. It'd be a different kind of quirky, but he would still be very quirky. Uh, as for how to rewrite Lost World, I honestly don't know. Because the core elements there are not inherently bad. It's a new location. Eggman has conquered a new set of villains who ultimately usurp him. I do like that Sonic's recklessness is the catalyst for the Deadly Six gaining control. And then you have hero and villain uniting against the common threat. That's all good stuff. Um, the issue with the Deadly Six being a litany of very bare bones characters, I don't think you can avoid in the format of an action platformer, because if you dwell too long on the story, you ruin the flow of the gameplay. And the gameplay of an action platformer needs to be quick and snappy in succession. Um, the fairly meaningless in exchanges between Sonic and each of the six before each boss encounter doesn't do a lot to flesh them out, but cutting them would take away what little there is. And I'm not a big fan of having character defining or plot defining elements in voiceover while you're playing a stage. Like I'm concentrating on not dying. 
Mm -hmm. don't say pertinent information that I can't focus on while the music is playing, while the sound effects are playing, while I'm playing the game. That I understand the appeal of that, but I feel like that is a detriment. Mega Man, Mega Man. (laughs) (laughs) Flavor text is fine, you know, fun incidental stuff, but more defining aspects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. It's, I feel like the fundamentals of it are fine, but I just don't know if it would work for that style of gameplay. Like it might be too intricate of a story for that style of action platformer. Maybe I'm overthinking it, Mm -hmm. Uh... but maybe also another, another approach might have been to focus on Zavok, build him up as the new big bad and let the other five kind of linger in the background, make them his supporting cast so that you're not splitting your focus six ways over while also trying to drive the main narrative. Right. It's, 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 it's pretty messy. <laughs> I will say for lost world story. Um, I I mean, it, there's some, there's some fun in there. I like sassy tales. I would keep sassy tales in a rewrite of Lost World. <laughs> <laughs> People are like, why is Tails so sassy? I'm like, why isn't he sassy more often? This is great. <laughs> someone, needs to, someone needs to give Sonic back some of his a taste of his own medicine occasionally. <laughs> why not let it be the person who knows him the best other than Eggman? I don't know, man. I don't know. What do you think would happen if Rouge or Shadow babysat Cream on a danger-free day? I could see them having tea parties and makeovers with her and getting into it. Rouge, maybe. Like, she can loosen up, realizes that Cream is nothing but pure innocence and light, and lets her guard down. Shadow would, like, turn on a movie and say, sit here, watch this, don't move. Now he burns <laughs> the chicken nuggets for dinner. I, I don't know. I think Shadow would actually be... I, I I think Shadow would actually be a good babysitter in a way you probably don't want him to be. Like, he would teach Cream how to use a gun. <laughs> like, I mean, there's a lot of... I'm, I'm pulling this... This is a fan idea, Ian. But I've seen plenty of fan art of uh, Shadow teaching Cream how to use a gun, and it's adorable. I mean, it's frightening, but it's also adorable. <laughs> and it's something I feel like he would totally do. <laughs> So you place your hand on this man's neck, you'll feel what feels like a lever, and right next to your thumb will feel like a button. Push the button, pull the lever. I don't think this is good information, Mr. Shadow. <laughs> but you never know when it might be useful, especially when <laughs> with what Cream has to deal with. I don't know, man. <laughs> Shadow might be onto something here. <laughs> I'm going on patrol around the house. Again? See, Shadow's a good guy. He just has a weird way of showing it. Mm. <laughs> the most deadpan reading of Good Night Moon. That's fine. <laughs> and next up, do you guys have any favorite Disney cartoons from the entire history of them? Some of my favorites are Rapunzel's Tangled Adventures, The Owl House, The New Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, Lilo and Stitch the Series, and Big City Greens. Yeah, Owl House is great. Uh the theme song for New Adventures of Winnie the Pooh is forever ingrained in my memory. No, I'm not going to break into song. I'm actively <laughs> resisting that impulse. Uh, you know, the, the classic Disney afternoon, Rescue Rangers, DuckTales, Gargoyles, Aladdin. Man, Aladdin went hard. <laughs> you know, it, went, it did more than it needed to, and it was great. It really did, actually, thinking about it. Yeah, it, it's surprisingly solid. I like, uh, I'm I'm a huge fan of DuckTales. I really especially love the more recent 2017 version of it. Because while the original is good, it's very entertaining. The characters are delightful. The, uh, the character development and the overarching story and the fact that the, the, uh, the boys have, you know, distinct personalities from each other <laughs> and actually go through some character development and growth over multiple episodes it's it's very very good and it's just a very like heartwarming and positive series overall really like 
Even they they even softened Scrooge up a little bit, but he, he's still Scrooge. He's still noticeably Scrooge, but it, it's kind of he, he's he's not quite as hard edged mm-hmm. as uh, as previous mm-hmm. incarnations of him have been. Which, on the one hand, I, I get why people might not be really into that because part of his charm is that belligerence and hardness of his personality that he has. But also, I do appreciate him, you know, being a little bit more thoughtful and, you know, not just a ultra rich capitalist. <laughs> so, yeah, I love DuckTales. Um, Gargoyles, like you've mentioned, absolutely brilliant show. Um, Darkwing Duck. God, that's still one of my favorite superhero parodies. Mm-hmm. Just, uh, just the fact that it's still so relevant today is is amazing. Like they saw the superhero boom coming from a mile away and already knew how to make fun of it. <laughs> so it's so ahead of its time. The new Mickey Mouse shorts are like all genuinely funny too. I haven't seen them. Oh. <laughs> make a point. They're short. <laughs> okay. I've only seen like the really, really little kid cartoon of uh, Mickey. That's it, it, I think it's I think it's 3D animated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah, no. that I, that, I, that's not that's not my thing. I not my not my cup of tea. No, everyone's in that kind of retro style, but with much more modern <laughs> sensibilities and in humor. Mm, okay. I don't know. It, it's made the exp- the phrase "will happen" just <laughs> crack me up every time. Um, <laughs> that entire sequence, man. <laughs> You mean Mac McMuscles didn't already did th- do that? What? <laughs> <laughs> well, Apple. He doesn't even say it that way anymore, though. It's not even spelled that way anymore on the title cards or I anything. Know, oh I man. Know. Well, do you really want to risk raising the ire of the mouse? <sighs> I mean, I guess if Disney's over here copywriting a malformed version of what happened, then hmm, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, no. Our last question from Madeline. Sonic, Tails, and the rest of the modern Sonic cast get transported to the Tangled universe and meet Rapunzel, Eugene, Cassandra, Varian, and other Tangled characters. What adventures do they have? I have not seen the Tangled series. I've just seen the movie. And that was a while ago. That's Charming a, movie. It's, it's a delightful movie, yes. This is very entertaining. But it's been... I haven't seen it since it was in theaters. So, my memory and is And I've heard shot. nothing but good things about the TV series. I just, I haven't sat down to watch it yet. Mm-hmm. Come to think of it, I haven't seen the new Carmen San Diego either. I heard that was good too. I've heard very good things about that one. Um, I have also heard very good things about the, uh, in the similar vein, the um, She-Ra show, mm-hmm. Princesses of mm-hmm. Power. So, um, but yeah, I have not seen the Tangled cartoon at all. I'm I'm sorry. I wish we had a better answer for you. But I do think that, uh, you know, whatever adventures they have, I mean, I'm sure Sonic and company would fit right in. They fit into everything, it seems. <laughs> I mean, it's virtually another storybook game. Honestly, it yeah, you're right. It would be. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> wow. I, hadn't, I didn't even think about it that way, but yeah. <laughs> uh, wow. Hmm. Well, if you have any ideas about how what adventures folks might have, leave them down in the comments. Thank you again for Madeline Blue Star 7 for sponsoring this episode. If you want your own Bumblecast Mini, uh, buy one for $25 over at patreon.com slash bumblecast, ko slash bumblecast, or be a YouTube member. We'll see you next time. 